The New York Giants shook up their coaching staff. What moves were made? Were they the right moves, the wrong moves? And where did the Giants go from here? We're going to break all that down for you coming up next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Trena, credentialed member of the New York Giants media. You can follow me on Twitter or X at Patricia underscore Trena, T-R-A-I-N-A, or on Instagram and threads at Patty Trena, P-A-T-T-I-T-R-A-I-N-A. And today's episode of Locked On Giants is brought to you by Price Picks the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the promo code locked on NFL. That's in all lowercase, by the way, for a first deposit match up to $100. And on today's locked on giants podcast, I know a lot of you have been writing to me saying, where's the podcast on what happened on Monday? Well, here it is folks. We're going to talk about the giants coaching staff, the shakeups, that happened on Monday. Now, some of them were expected, some of them not expected, and some interesting twists and turns with this coaching staff decisions made by Brian Dable. And to be clear, the decisions were made by Brian Dable. He is in charge of his coaching staff, who he wants, who he doesn't want. He um, will consult with Joe Shane, but for the most part, he has final say over that. So let's get into it. I'm going to start off with the obvious ones. Um, Bobby Johnson, offensive line coach. We all knew that that one was going to happen. All right. Bobby Johnson, for those of you who don't remember a couple of years ago, he was handpicked by Brian Dable from their time working together in Buffalo, brought him down to the giants and, you know, hope that he would fix the offensive line with all this new talent that they were bringing in and just didn't work with Bobby Johnson. I mean, the offensive line this year allowed the second most sacks in history since sacks were recorded. Um, So that was not good. The Giants had a bunch of young players who did not take the next step in their development. You know, you look at Joshua Zudu, who was inconsistent, Marcus McKethan, who was inconsistent, Evan Neal, who just could not get out of his own way. You know, so those guys, they just didn't take the next step forward. And to take that a step further, you had a veteran like Justin Pugh this year, who at times looked like he was totally lost. No matter what position he was playing, he just looked lost. And as you know, my everydayers, that is, as as my everydayers would know, I've been saying for the longest time, What are they teaching in the classroom? What is not translating from Bobby Johnson to the players and not making it over onto the field? So Brian Dable, you know, took a look at it. You know, like I said, Bobby Johnson's a friend of his. Finally decided, you know what? The time has come. Got to move on. So the Giants will be in the market for a new offensive line coach. Much overdue. And hopefully they get the right guy in here to develop that line because it's been a problem now for over a decade and it's got to stop. The other move that was announced this morning, uh, Monday morning by Dable prior to uh, his joint press conference with Joe Shane, the general manager, they relieved special teams coordinator Thomas McGahey of his duties. Now, T-Mac was a guy, I got to be honest with you, I, I went back and forth as to whether or not I thought he might stay or whether he'd go. I could see arguments for both sides. And in the end, you know, T-Mac has been here now for what? Three different coaching staffs, Shermer, um, Joe Judge, and, and now Dable. And in the, you know, the, the years that he was with Shermer, his special teams units weren't bad. They weren't, you know, top of the line, but they weren't bad. Then when Joe Judge came in here, you know, you, you had reason to wonder if maybe Judge was meddling a little too much, given Judge's, you know, special teams background. And, you know, you kind of got the impression often from, from McGahee that that was the case, that Shermer, uh, excuse me, that Judge was meddling 
uh, a little bit too much in special teams. But here's the thing. The last two years under Dable, and this is what they, you know, Dable is judging basically the last two years. He doesn't care about, you know, what happened four years ago or 10 years ago when T Mac was also on staff with the Giants. He's looking at the last two years. And the last two years, just far too inconsistent. Now, injuries did play a part of it. You know, T Mac often said, you know, I'm like a chef who makes gumbo with the ingredients you give me. And, you know, he had guys that were taken off special teams that were needed on offense or defense due to injuries. But still, a good special teams coach has to be able to overcome that. You can't use that as an excuse. You have to overcome that. The four kickers that they had this year, you've got to be able to overcome that as well, you know, as best as you can. Coach these guys up. And, you know, I've often wondered why the Giants don't get a kicking coach in here. You know, maybe they feel that they don't need one, you know, for, for Graham Gano, who presumably will be back next year after he rehabs from his uh, knee surgery. Jamie Gillen, the punter, he looked a lot better this year. Um, they got better gunner play from uh, Darnay Holmes and uh, Nick McLeod. But towards the end there, Nick McLeod was needed on defense. So they kind of had to take him off a little bit. But just really overall, when you look at T-Max units the last two years, Far too inconsistent with guys not maintaining lane integrity, with guys, you know, making stupid penalties, um, you know, big returns being given up here and there, just stupid things that just kind of added up. And I think, you know, at this point, Dable had had enough of it, decided to make the change and, and move all of T-Mac, who did have one more year remaining on his contract. So that was uh, the two moves that they made this morning or were announced this morning, Bobby Johnson is out. T-Mac is out. So we'll have to see who the Giants bring in to replace those guys. Hopefully, you know, as the coaching carousel spins, and it, it began spinning on Monday with uh, the Falcons head coach, Arthur Arthur um, Smith, being fired. Uh, Ron Rivera was fired down in, um, in, in Washington. So we'll see if maybe some of those guys – their staff members become available. Maybe they're worth, you know, looking into. I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see it. Or maybe, you know, Dable goes to the college ranks to pull somebody. So that'll be uh, worth keeping an eye on. And then just real quick, and I know you all want me to get to Wink Martindale, and I'm going to get to him in just a moment, and actually in the next segment. But the Giants also are going to have to replace running backs coach Jeff Nixon, who, as we all know by now, is going to Syracuse to be their offensive coordinator and strength and conditioning coach Craig Fitzgerald, who is going down to Florida to head up their strength and conditioning program. That's actually a little concern for me because I was talking to one player today in the locker room uh, as they were packing up their belongings. And the player was telling me how his off season goal was to add weight. And I said to him, did the coaches tell you that? Or is that just something you want to do? And he said, no, no, it's something I want to do. I think it's going to help me in my game. And, you know, just we talk about injuries and stuff like that and performance drop-offs. And really, you know, if there's nobody there guiding these players as to how much weight they should gain or lose, you got to wonder how much of that affects them, you know, when they come back from, you know, the break and they start working out and maybe they've lost speed or they're slower or, you know, not as quick to react or whatever the case may be. So that's something the Giants really have to get consistent is, is a strength and conditioning program where, you know, they're recommending to these, you know, players how much weight to gain, how much to lose and that sort of thing. So just a quick thought there on that topic. All right, coming up next, Wink Martindale is out. We're going to talk about that right after this. Hey, Giant fans, the NFL's regular season has wrapped up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and score big this NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. 
All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Traina, P Train. And all this week, we're going to have brand new episodes of Locked On Giants. And by the way, speaking of Locked On, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you all day, every day, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel. All right, let's talk Wink Martindale. Now, this one is a big one. The news came out on Monday afternoon that Wink Martindale was resigning his spot as Giants defensive coordinator. Now, to give you a little bit of a backstory here, there came a report initiated by, I believe it was Charlotte Carroll of The Athletic, who reported that Drew Wilkins, the outside linebackers coach, and his brother Kevin Wilkins, who is a Giants defensive assistant, both of them were relieved of their duties. Now, why is this important? Because the Wilkins brothers, were handpicked by Wink Martindale to join the Giants staff. They had been with him in Baltimore when Wink was the defensive coordinator down there. They were tight, the three of them. You know, they were on the same page. It was like each guy could finish the other guy's sentence. That's how tight they were. So what was kind of interesting here with this whole thing is, is the second that word got out that those brothers had been fired, I thought to myself, okay, Probably just a matter of time before Wink resigns because I kind of saw it as a power play here. Um, if you go back to what was it around mid year or actually before the Giants' bye week, Jay Glazer's report, Jay Glazer of Fox Sports, reported that there was friction between Dable and Martindale, and the two men denied it. They just they, they just downplayed it. They denied it. They tried to keep peace. And, you know, Glazer's report said um, at the time that a parting was imminent. He even said that it was so bad that it might even happen sooner than later. Well, it didn't happen during the season, which was a good thing because that would have just been totally, you know, not the way to go. So here we are at the end of the season. And Dable, who during the uh, the press conference that he had Monday morning, kind of made a quip when he was asked about the coordinators. He was asked if Mike Kafka and uh, Wink would be back. And he said he expected them to be back, even though he also added that he hadn't spoken to them at the time, you know, that he was telling us us this. And then he referenced a quote that Wink had, had said something about, you know, to the effect of this is a destination, not a stepping stone. And the way he said it in retrospect, when I think about it, it was almost said with like a kind of a smirk. And, you know, obviously after that presser, you know, we saw Dable in the locker room. He was walking around, you know, hugging guys, saying goodbye to people, making small talk, you know, with reporters. Hey, what are you doing? You know, you got any plans for the off season, that sort of thing. But you wonder if um, there were, you know, the discussion that he had with Wink, if it just kind of, you know, reached the point of no return. And apparently it did. You know, again, the first shot fire was the firing of the Wilkins brothers, whom Wink is close to. And so now Wink, who I believe had one more year left on his contract, resigned his post, wants to pursue head coaching opportunities or other opportunities. So I'm not sure how that's going to work exactly. I believe they'll let him out of his contract. Um, You know, if it's a firing, obviously he gets to get out of his contract. For resignation, I think they'll just let him out of his contract as well, especially if he could go and find another job someplace else and they don't have to pay him. So that decision, even though you kind of saw it coming, you you really kind of hope that it wasn't going to happen. And here's why. Wink might not have been perfect. His defense had its problems. But of the three units, I think we could probably all agree that the defense was probably the least of the problems, you know, in terms of, which is, you know, that's like saying, you know, you've got three picks at a state fair and one of them is going to win first prize. But that being said, you know, they were building something. And, you know, now 
depending on which direction Dable goes in, they've got to start from scratch. So how does that affect, for example, the role that Bobby O'Carrigate played or the role that Dexter Lawrence played or the role that um, Kayvon Thibodeau played? What tweaks are going to be made to those guys' role? Now, maybe they're better. Maybe they're not better. How is that going to affect decisions by, say, for example, Xavier McKinney, who is going to be an unrestricted free agent on whether or not to return? It may or it may not. We don't know. Um, so a lot of uncertainty there. Now, the other problem I see with the Giants having parted ways with Wink Martindale is what are they going to do besides, you know, defensive coordinator, who might they get to replace him? And I'll give you some names coming up. But here's the thing. The Giants are at a crossroad with the offense. So there's a possibility that the Giants bring in a young quarterback via the draft. And you know that if they do that, Dable is going to be very heavily involved with the development of that young quarterback. All right. So ideally, if you're going to be that thickly involved with, you know, one side of the ball, you want to know that you have somebody running the other sides of the ball that you don't have to worry about. So my guess is that, you know, will Dable maybe look at somebody he's familiar with? you know, like a Eric Washington or maybe a Les Leslie Frazier, it's possible. You know, because if you're going to have to run the offensive side, be more involved in that, the last thing you want is to be worrying about the defensive side or special teams or whatever. So I'm curious to kind of see how that goes. Now, for all we know, folks, change might be good. Maybe, you know, the next defensive coordinator comes in here and, Fixes the run defense, which has not been, you know, stellar. Maybe they get more out of Kayvon Thibodeau, who had a pretty good year this year, but, you know, was had, had his ups and downs. Maybe a new defensive coordinator can salvage, say, for example, uh, uh, Aziz Ojolari, if they can keep him healthy, that is. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, it's probably the most scary thing right now because you just don't know who's going to come in who's going to be the quote-unquote savior to keep that defense humming how much are they going to be sent back are they going to have to start from scratch or will they be able to kind of pick up some of where, where they left off with some modifications so these are all questions that have to be answered and, you know, I have no idea what direction Brian Dable is going to go in. I'm going to be following, obviously, any reports of defensive coordinators coming in for interviews. That's going to be uh, interesting to find out. But this has certainly been, you know, a move that I got to tell you, you know, and you, again, for my everydayers who have watched uh, past shows, I said that of the coordinators, the ones that I thought were really in the hot, in trouble, I thought Kafka, Mike Kafka, the offensive coordinator, might be the guy who was in trouble. Right now, it seems like he's okay. He's not going anywhere. Um, I thought Wink might have a chance to stay if he and Dable worked out any differences they had. And T-Mac, I was kind of, you know, split. One day I felt, okay, he, maybe he stays. The next day I thought, okay, I can make a case for him going. So that's where we're at with the Giants coaching uh, staff. Now, are more changes coming that I don't know, but if certainly if they do and they're anything major, we will, of course, mention them on the podcast. Now, coming up next, some final thoughts plus some candidates who might replace Wink Martindale. So don't go anywhere. Hey, Giant fans, just because the New York Giants season is over doesn't mean that the fun of playing daily fantasy sports with prize picks has to stop. Because right now with basketball season underway, Price Picks gives you the chance to pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League, created specifically for combo projections featuring two or more players from different sports or leagues. And did you know that you can also play along with friends and family by checking out the community tab? Price Picks is so easy to play. Just pick two or more players, predict their stats, and sit back and see how they perform. 
It takes less than 60 seconds to make an entry. And when you play with prize picks, you'll enjoy quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and a wide selection of players and stat types. So what are you waiting for? Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. And that promo code is locked on NFL for your first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Train at P Train. And the Giants season is over, but we at the Locked on Giants podcast, we're keeping up with five shows a week. I'm going to see about doing a live stream for you guys on Friday with Tana and Dog. We'll see if we can get that going. Kind of, you know, a recap of the season and everything that's happened since. And um, for those of you who asked me uh, about yesterday's show, yes, I had pre-taped that before the Eagles game. But as I said, win or lose, you know, I, I just didn't see the point in doing a regular wrap up like I normally do after a game because I knew bigger things were to come. And sure enough, they have. But anyway, who are some of the names that maybe, maybe can replace Wink Martindale? OK, um, I haven't gone and done a deep dive into these, into, you know, all the names that are possible, but I'll throw a few out. Um. There is, um, I hope I can pronounce this guy's name right, Ejero Avero, who was with the Panthers. Um, see if maybe, you know, he might be a fit. I mentioned Leslie Frazier, um, who, of course, was with Dable up in Buffalo. Um, Antonio Pierce has been mentioned as a possibility. I know I saw that. Uh, somebody asked me about Antonio Pierce, but that's if he doesn't get the head coaching job with the Raiders. And I have a feeling that Pierce will get that job. And I don't know if Pierce would, you know, want to necessarily take a step backward in his coaching career. He might, I mean, you never know, but uh, um, you know, I, I'd be surprised if the Raiders don't keep Antonio Pierce. He's done a really good job. I don't think Patrick Graham would be back. Um, I know somebody asked me about him. I think it was in my blue crew community. Somebody asked me about Patrick Graham, Patrick Graham kind of, you know, I want to say burned a bridge when he left the organization. Remember, he was initially Dable's first choice for defensive coordinator, and then he decided to go out west and join, you know, Josh McDaniel's Raiders staff at the time. So I don't think it would be him. Somebody asked about Pepper Johnson. I'm not sure Pepper is going to be a candidate. I'm not saying he shouldn't be, but I, I just don't see it. Um, Gerard Mayo. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I I don't think it's going to be any of those guys, but you know, I haven't like really do dove into it and I will, um, you know, cause I, I just kind of wrote a few names down and um, I'm re I really want to like study because in addition to finding the right guy, you have to make sure he's a fit for what you want to run. And Dable, you know, I mentioned that Dable's an offensive minded coach and, you know, it's not like he's going to say to, to a defensive coordinator, you have total free reign to do whatever the heck you want. Dable probably has some ideas as to how he wants the defense set up. Um, the details on how they get to that point, that's going to be up to the coordinator. So the two of them got to get on the same page, obviously, and just kind of, you know, marry their ideas together. And then there's also the matter of, like I said, the personnel. You know, how many of the players on the defense were brought in to specifically match a need that Wink Martindale outlined to, you know, the front office? And are those players, you know, are, are their skill sets salvageable, if you will, to for whoever comes in here next? That's going to be a big one. All right. Sometimes, you know, you go out and you get a specific player and, for, for one defensive coordinator, and then you find out that, you know, when, when the next defensive coordinator comes in, he's maybe not a match anymore, and then he becomes expendable. So that's something to keep an eye on. But um, the the other thing, you know, I, I would say about the defense and this whole turnover thing, Wink was universally, I think, loved by his players. He was loved and respected. 
He just had a certain way about him. And, you know, yeah, I know he had the, you know, the, the, the issue with Xavier McKinney, but the two of them supposedly patched that up. But you also wonder about that. I mean, I, I know these players understand that the NFL is a business and guys come and they go and nothing lasts forever and all that good stuff. But um, I'm kind of curious to see, you know, how that all plays out. And I think the timing of this is pretty interesting. And I'll say that because the news didn't come out about Wink until well after the players had left the locker room. So on Monday, the players were in the locker room. I think they started at eight, I want to say, and then they finished up around noon. I think that's when the last of the players left. The news obviously about Wink didn't happen until, you know, around what, three, three thirty, something like that. So by then the players were gone. Now, I can't speak to whether or not Wink told anybody that he was thinking of resigning. I don't know if it was sudden or, or, or what went on there, but the timing is important because, you know, now you give these players an opportunity to kind of go into the off season, rest, rejuvenate, and just kind of, you know, get used to whatever might come. And I got to think that, you know, with the all-star games coming up, the combine's going to be up, up uh, you know, next month, towards the end of next month. They're going to want to get these positions filled, not just the defensive coordinator, but all these other openings that happen. So, yeah, never a dull moment in the land of the Giants. I mean, 6 and 11, you knew changes were coming. Two coordinators out of three so far changed. Going to be interesting to see how they, they plug it and what kind of results they get. So as always, folks, make sure you keep it here on the Locked on Giants podcast because we will be following these stories and the candidates. And I'll do uh, shorts and updates as need be. And of course, don't forget to check out my work over on Giants Country where we've got plenty of stuff going on over there, including a rundown of... Um, we're going to have a bunch of stuff from the locker room. Today was an open locker room. We were in the locker room for, I want to say, an hour and 15 minutes. So a lot of stuff there. Hope you will check it out. As always, thank you for making the Locked on Giants podcast your first listen of the day. Or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for an all-new episode of Locked on Giants.